So there was a man who was the son of a slave and was at one time the tallest man in America, tallest man in the world. And you probably never heard his name before. His name was John Rogan. And that's who we're going to talk about in this video. John Rogan was the son of a slave and the tallest African American ever. He was born February 16th, 1865 in Hendersonville, Tennessee. So as the son of a former slave, his story is a little bit unique. You see, John was a tall man, a very tall man, much taller than the average black man. He used to call him Bud. So Bud Brogan was born just two years after the Emancipation Proclamation where Abraham Lincoln signed that proclamation saying that all slaves were free. So you can imagine how, what kind of time that was in America at that time. And in Tennessee, you know, that's the South. He was born in the South. Um, so it's safe to say that um, he would have had a pretty difficult life if he was quote unquote normal. But the fact that he was unusually tall kind of uh, kind of made his life take a, a bunch of different turns that other people didn't have to experience. His father was a former slave named William Rogan. William Rogan had 12 children. So John was number four out of 12. Um, and no one really knows who his mother was. There are no records indicating uh, what his mother's name was. So you can chalk that up to the technology and the record keeping of the time. But here's the thing, until he was about 13 years old, John Rogan lived a pretty normal life. I mean, he grew up like a normal boy, except when he turned 13, he started growing rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, that by the time he was 30 years old, he was eight foot six, eight foot six. Let's put this into context, right? Shaquille O'Neal, pretty tall guy, seven foot one. He's John Rogan was a full foot and a half taller than Shaquille O'Neal. Foot and a half taller. But let's take a look at some of his proportions. His hands, for one. The length of his hands were about 11 inches. So the in length of an average man's hand is about 7.6 inches. So his hands were a full what, three and a half inches longer than the average man's hands. What's weird, though, was his feet. His feet were about 13 inches long. The average man's feet are 11 inches long. His were 13, which means his feet weren't really all that much bigger than the average man's feet. So there was some disproportion going on there. You can imagine how that would have made it difficult for him to walk around. And his height, by the end of, by the, end of the day, by the end of his life, he was eight foot nine. Eight foot nine. So that's... Uh, just for reference, one foot um, nine inches taller than Shaquille O'Neal. Now imagine that much height and only weighing about about 230 pounds. That's about how much he weighed when he when he died. But the interesting thing about his story is it wasn't just about uh, a really tall guy. It was about survival. It was about ingenuity. It was about creativity. He was famous for for getting around on what they called a goat cart. Because by the time he, he, he got up in age in his 20s, he couldn't walk anymore. He had grown so fast, he had got accustomed to walking with crutches. And then eventually he just couldn't walk anymore. So what he did was he made a cart, um, kind of like a wagon. He would sit on his wagon and, and he had goats to pull the wagon. He had reins and everything. So that's how he got around. He had a goat cart and the goats pulled him around everywhere he needed to be. He couldn't work. Uh, he, at least he couldn't do physical labor, but that's what I talk about when I say ingenuity. When they say uh, necessity is the mother of invention, it just so happens that he had a, a talent for drawing. He was an artist, so he would he would create drawings and he would sell them. He would do self portraits and he would make himself the subject, and he would sell his artwork. Um, he would go down to the train station and work down there, passers by. And everybody had, you know, this curiosity. So he would sell them a memento, uh, something to remember him by, something that when someone they told somebody else about this big, tall, quote unquote, Negro giant, 
um, they would have something to show them so that these people could understand what they had seen. And he made a living off of that. One thing he didn't do is he refused to be uh, a victim of, of the freak shows and the side shows at the carnival. He had too much pride for that. He wouldn't do that. Um, they say he, the records say anyway, in the, the stories, the accounts, they say he was a really nice guy. Deep voice, um, always made people laugh, fun to be around. Uh, like a like a like a jolly giant, like like the jolly giant. Just imagine that somebody going through that. Imagine you going through that type of uh, challenge in your life. Can't even get around your your joints locking up, um, things of that nature, and still managing to have. And matter of fact, I mean, a, a few years, a few decades out of slavery. Can you imagine that? How how in the world can you find something to be jolly about during times like that? But this man managed to do it. Um, managed to do whatever it took to survive and whatever he needed to do to make a living for himself. So what finally killed him, what actually what, what, what plagued him most of his life was a disease called ankylosis. And what happens to people that have this, uh, this disease or some version of it or this condition is that the bones continue to grow. Um, and eventually they'll grow and they'll fuse together. So you'll have fingers you can't bend, joints that can't bend. It happens in the spine, where the vertebrae start to fuse together. To eventually, they just the kid can't bend anymore. So what happened was he was going through life just constantly locking up, just more and more and more. To eventually got to the point where he just couldn't move, and that's that's pretty much uh, what ended his life. The bones just kept growing and growing and fusing together. Another side of that would have been brain fog. Um, just imagine all that pain firing on your nerves, back and forth in your brain, just constant pain. You wouldn't be able to think straight. Uh, I know I wouldn't be able to think straight, but that's what they called it. They called it brain fog. So eventually that's what killed him. That's what took his life. He died on September 12, 1905 in Gallatin, Tennessee. He was 40 years old. So the medical professionals, that's what they contributed his death to was ankylosis. Interesting thing about his burial, his family buried him, in, buried him in the family yard. And what they did was they had concrete laid over his gravesite. Why did they do that? They did that so that nobody could get to his body because uh, he refused to be made a freak while he was alive. Uh, and they refused, refused to allow him to become a freak after he had passed away. Someone would have went and tampered with the body. So they had concrete laid over the body so that nobody could exhume it or say they wanted to do examinations and things of that nature. So his name was John Rogan. He was eight foot nine. At one point, he was the tallest man in the world. And to this day, he's still the second tallest man American ever and the tallest African American in history, John Rogan. Just a fun fact I thought I would share. If you like it, like it. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. And if you think it's shareable, share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. On that note, take care, family. Peace.